caterpillar called 320. Today we are going to remove main swivel aka a rotary manifold. Here's the main pin, bottom of the boom and if we look down there's a lines are coming to the main swivel and that is our rotary manifold so hydraulic power is coming from the house to the undercarriage to the final drive walking motors not fun but you have to do what you have to do i show you why we have to pull it out and let's go and see what's up okay if this video is helpful put a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel very appreciated be careful walking you can fall and hurt yourself i'm part way through the process and let's go up ladder and boom see this grease this grease is hydraulic oil mixed with the ring gear a grease which you use it to grease your main ring gear and uh, tons of stuff is coming out and machine is losing hydraulic oil and there's a no visible leaks where it's leaking it's leaking at the rotary manifold one of the outer teflon seal yeah is leaking hydraulic oil down into the slurry tub and as you can see well, lots of that creamy very thick <laughs> greasy oily residue inside the slurring and uh, we have to get it fixed fix that leak to fix the leak we have to remove this manifold okay let's climb underneath and as you can see there's our bad boy already open that bottom lead and we have a pressure return lines we have a case drain we have a speed lines yeah we have to undo all of them remove those bolts do the lots of fun stuff at the top down at the shaft down well and uh, yeah as you can see here i have this plate removed and i try to get much of that greasy oily substance out not much came out because it's winter outside and this stuff is thick it really doesn't like to flow but i got some out i will do clean up later and uh, have my tools ready oh yeah okay let's get started yeah i got much grease out what came out that's it good for now and i'm going to start the machine and remove those blocks and keep machine down as possible it will make our life easier working and we also have to pull the manifold okay let's turn our night switch on okay Getting in, we have to lift ourselves. Cat. Okay. Air intake heater on. Let's wait for a little while. It's still winter outside. Enough to pull those blocks out. 
no rush, no hurry. Nothing takes longer the job you have to do twice. Okay. Ancient 316 and before we'll get started disconnecting any hydraulic lines we have to release the hydraulic pressure. There we go. No pressure. Good. Nice. Okay. I'm going to start removing and disconnecting everything on the bottom. Then we'll go right to the top, dive in, get some stuff sorted out over there, and go down. That's a little bit of process. We'll show you how I do it million ways to do the same thing but it's not that difficult i have done it before yeah okay let's go underneath and now we're lower on the ground much comfortable to work yeah ever since here you can be comfortable laying down on this foam and get those lines off bolts yeah, will be fun. Let me turn my light on. Good. Here's our bottom part of the main swivel. I like it called a rotary manifold. We have main supply line and the return line to our final drive motors. We have case drain for both sides and we have a second speed lines because this machine has two speeds turtle and a rabbit and uh, yeah those smallest ones are usually your speed lines for switching to second speed and uh, let's take a closer look here we have a uh, four hydraulic lines coming to the final drive walking motor this is not a caterpillar, this is a different machine. This is John Deere, and John Deere uses Hitachi parts, pumps, motors, lots of hydraulic components made by Hitachi. And uh, four lines, as you remember, we had a four lines for each side at the rotary manifold. At the top, this mid-size line coming to the top. This is a case drain line. Then. Next, down two lines, the biggest lines. Those ones are hydraulic power fluid supply to the walk-in motor and return. And this skinny, like tiny, smallest line is your speed line because this walk-in motor has two speeds. Yeah, that's what we have at the each final drive and the rotary manifold helps us to deliver the hydraulic flow to the motor and take it back yeah same thing on another side as well okay let's get back to our caterpillar okay greasy oily stuff is started coming out we'll load our machine it's kind of moving and i don't want it to keep dripping for now i'll just stuff this spill pad in like that just keep it more or less clean because we have quite a bit of work to do here we don't want to get too dirty yeah let's get the hydraulic oil is sitting yeah no leaks from the flat face flanges hydraulic lines are all all intact when we'll crack the lines, a little bit of hydraulic oil will come out. Uh, we'll have a bucket here to catch the oil. And we're starting with the case drain lines, inch and 116. Here we go. Let's put the caps on lines and stop this leak. Okay, good. Well, we drain everything what wasn't pipes are already drained i'll just wipe them off 
like that. And put them up like that. There we go. Return line and supply line, one for each side. What I like to do, because it will take time to get the manifold rebuilt, I like to mark this one's as one, and this one's as one, too. Then I know this one's two, this one's two. And I know this one's first, and that's a second. That way, I won't mix them and uh, it's easy because if you put them backwards uh, your walking direction will be changed if you go <laughs> go forward you'll go in reverse the reverse will become forward that's what you just pay attention before taking hoses off take a picture it will help you later on something like that okay now i'm going to remove the flat face flanges this type of fittings as you can see they're half moon shapes two pieces each and one on the left same on the right and uh, yeah i'm using 18 mil socket pretty easy to remove those bolts keep everything together and uh, yeah i like to keep everything organized i made my own container where i will keep all bolts from the bottom flanges in one place and then I don't have to look for anything I have a drain <laughs> big drain catching pan here I'm just laying down and working right there and everything what will drain one drain on me and at the same time I have a room to work otherwise I will get to those flange bolts. Yeah, supply line and return lines, they're disconnected. Put the plugs there, and the same way I'm going to do on the left side. Yeah. The reason why we started with the bottom lines instead of doing the upper ones, just because we want to drain the much hydraulic oil what's remaining inside the lines on top, some of them inside the manifold. We'll, we'll go to disconnect the upper lines it won't much won't make much mess it means we want to spill less oil as possible especially up at the top because it's a little bit tight to work down at the base of the house okay i have one more left and uh, as you can see here where i do it and uh, i use the plastic zip ties to tight the lines all together make sure they are not on my way and you know, not hanging everywhere and uh, yeah they're not dripping they're not leaking anymore they're all good they're staying away and uh, we have one more and then we'll go and do both speed lines at the very top skinniest lines and uh, yeah okay we'll get this ones done now I can just slide the line off, catch the fluid carefully, let it drain, take the hose down. Nice, beautiful. Okay, time for a speed line. Have a seven eighths open wrench. Let's break it loose. This fitting, so fluid will come out. We're ready to catch. And this video is only a demonstration, just sharing with you how I do it. And always follow repair service manual when you do repairs. All right, I, I don't like this <laughs> A removal thing. It's not much fun. Yeah, here, yeah, nice. Okay. Stop it. I don't want to leak. All right. All done on this side. One more speed line left on the right. This is disconnected. Now we can remove this adapter fitting because manifold will come out from the top. 
and this extension fitting will be on the way. We have to undo it three quarters and yeah everything slowly dripping but not much nice yeah we can go put it together put it new or nice yeah beautiful okay let's check it out we have a drain lines disconnected supply and a and return and the speed lines are on both sides, all good. We only have those mounting bolts, which we'll do later. We have a reference alignment mark as well. Yeah, uh, let's go outside. <laughs> let's go on the top, more sunlight, and get the rest. Now let's go up and see what next. We're so lucky today, no wind, no snow, no rain, nothing's dripping. Beautiful, sunny, warm day. Here we go, I have everything set up. Comfort is first, cushion, cushion, but it won't be much fun. Okay, because our upper part of the manifold is down there. <laughs> oh well, we have to undo those lines stopper block there's a rubber gasket bracket and uh, yeah but just give you perspective how all the way down to the top four feet <laughs> well 48 inches that's how far we have to reach deep down oh, yeah. but no worries we're done i'll show you what tools to use how to remove everything and then now we have a strategy do it efficiently and do it right okay let's take a look first and as you can see here we have our case drain lines coming over here we have a speed lines, we have a two on each side, the big one, so is a supply pressure, return line, and same on the other side, we have a stopper block over there, as you can see, there's the two bolts, and weather seal rubber, yeah, they're around the bottom. We have to remove those ones and uh, yeah, we'll do it in sequence, we'll get it done. First of all, it's always nice to remove all dirt, debris, whatever is uh, up there. Looks clean, we don't have anything. And so we can start removing lines. Let's start from the top. This one which is going to the center. One is coming to the side. I'll do those two. Then, as you can see here, and the fittings, the flat face flanges, and uh, yeah, they're uh, different. One is higher, one is longer than another. You cannot mix them because they won't reach. Uh, yeah, always a good practice to take a picture before you will start reassembling, and it will help later. Who knows? Yeah, as you can see. Yeah, there are nineties. All right, tool pad here, and just catch the fluid. What will come out? Just like that. Don't need any. We'll get it cleaned up later. I'll throw one more over there. Just we'll keep everything as clean as possible and absorb the oil that's good enough for now let's remove this side line inch and the 116 let's break it loose it's gonna... <laughs> okay, let's okay gotcha 
now I have to hold my breath and dive in and try to do it fast because hanging upside down is not fun. You might have a, some headache, but if you have a headache, just stop it, take a break. Nice, okay, I pull this line up like that and put it aside for now. Nice, okay, good start. I don't worry about plugs right now, we'll do it later. Whatever will drip, will drip, will clean, and uh, yeah, we'll keep going. Disconnecting those lines, all right. 15, 16, let's crack this bad boy. All right, yeah. Oh, nice. Here we go. This was cracked loose. Let's take this. Freeze it off. Yeah, as you can start it. Here we go. Just bounce it up. Put it all, all right let's remove this line completely because it will be always in our way and i don't want to it i'll just put it aside like that okay just put a paper towel from over here good enough get plugs later and we're going down 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 to this speed line Alright, what size? 13, 16. Let's break it loose. Nice. Okay. I'm almost more than half of my body and let's try to reach this tiny little hose. Here we go. Let's pull this one up. Let's put it out of the way. Ah, oh, okay. Good. Let's get out. Try to be like you. Try to hang it down less as possible. Okay. Okay. Two lines are disconnected. We have those flat face flanges now. One is just getting tougher. Flat face flanges time. Okay. We need our trusted rigid half inch impact We need 18 mil socket Half inch extension, a couple of them And uh, yeah, we have to remove all those flanges as you can see There's a, Each of them has more bolts, same as we did just underneath the machine and uh, we'll do those two first and an upper one pull them aside tie them up i'm going to put a box down 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 there yeah somewhere here where i can put all my bolts all flanges yeah will work Rigid long extension, an 18 mil socket. Here we go. Nice. Beautiful. One more. Here we go. All four of them loose. Now time for the magnet pick. Same as you're usually using when you drop the socket. Who are you? With me. Here we go. Try it not to hang down for too long. Get a headache. It's not the best position to work when you have to reach four feet down. I'm trying to keep myself straight up as possible. Yeah. Nice. 
Okay. No time for the flange. Flange is removed. Half of it. Oh, there's another one. Oh. Uh -uh. No, come on. It'd be nice. Well, nice, yeah. Alright. One hose is disconnected. Which is pretty easy, as you could see. Let me move my camera up a bit and you can see better. Alright, yeah, hose is disconnected. Now we'll go and fish it up. Use our zip ties as usual. We'll always use them. And uh, yeah, let's go and catch this hose and lift it up. So, oh, come on, don't worry about it. All right, I got him up, and I'm going to tie this hose to the side. Pull it up here. We'll be out of the way. We have one more to do the same thing, but we have to get them all up. And put toe like that. That's for now. I'll do plugs later. Don't worry about it. Okay. Next. You got an idea? Pretty easy when you know how to do it. But it's always some tricks and tips and easiest ways to do it. One is removed. I'm going to do the rest of them in the same way. Yeah. Shouldn't be any problems. And then we'll get down to those bolts around. Alright. Oh. We'll catch you later. Here we go. Last one. All hoses are disconnected. It took me 40 minutes roughly to get all of them. Maybe the plugs. And as you can see, each hose has zip tied. If you just hang, stick it somewhere, it might snap you in the face. And lots of tension in this metal coated with a rubber wired hose. Yeah, I don't want that happen. Yeah, they are not dripping anymore and uh, looks almost done now we're going to disconnect this stopper block with the two 18 mil bolts to remove we'll get that one out we have to reach them all the way my three it's ratchet was it Eating my sock. When I was filming down there, my battery died. A little tiny GoPro. Eight battery. That's clean. Oh, GoPro again. And continue. Our bolt removal. All right. Oh. Here we go. Help. One more. Come on. Oh my goodness, I almost dropped all the way down. 
and the slipping. Oh, to give myself a little bit. Oh yeah, the block is off. Beautiful. All right. As you can see, this block is removed. Yeah, everything's possible if you do it right. And uh, we have only that zip tie and those bolts around. And remember, we still have those ones on the bottom. And the very last, okay, good enough. Beautiful, warm, sunny day changed to snow because it's January, it's still winter and we have to get our job done and uh, yeah snow doesn't help it either i have to cover all my tools because they all get wet okay let's dive in and see what's left as you can see we only have that rubber weather seal around the upper part of the manifold left we'll yeah undo those uh, one two three four five six seven eight eight 17 mil bolts around the housing remove that ring and that's it for upstairs and then we'll go under the machine which i think should be better no snow will be falling yeah okay let's undo those bolts and by the way that weather gasket rubber one is protecting any rainwater snow melt only debris getting inside the slurring tub yeah if you have a water coming inside the slurring check that gasket for any cracks see mine looks okay but we'll do the inspection we'll pull the manifold out okay 17 mil three eighths extension and our stubby su sub super compact rigid impact let's see if this guy will break those ones loose oh yeah nothing can stop rigid good oh ah! <laughs> oh okay things happen we have to we have to pull and magnet pick is coming to help us yeah i know oh, oh, oh. okay stay oh good okay we'll keep you close if we need it all right round two and then the rest of those ones at the four Thanks, Richard, for helping. Now we have to lift all those bolts. Okay. Oh, 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 oh no. All right, so Richard is helping. Yeah, okay. We'll take those bolts now. One step at a time. Let's just try to pry it. There we go. Wash the ring, whatever. The ring is up. All right. Let's go underneath and let's see what's happening. Here we go. I will have one, two, three, four, five, six, six bolts to remove around the upper part of the manifold yeah let's remove those bolts and uh, set up everything for the lift and we're using 5 8 deep socket and impact with extension let's just nice and easy i'll go and do the rest of the bolts and as you can see we already have a 
daylight breaking through that. <laughs> the last one. Beautiful. Okay. All bolts are removed. No. Oh, no loss with that. All right. All done here with our all our manifold bottom mounting bolts for the lift. We need a sling, couple durings, aka shackles, and a short piece of chain. Screw this bolt back. Caterpillar rotary manifold is coming out as you can see everything's pretty simple if you know how to do it and today Takuchi TB260 is helping us to do the heavy lifts yeah and this manifold is going to hydraulic shop main swivel is removed and now we can see where the hydraulic oil was leaking at the swivel where the inner and outer parts of the manifold meet each other yeah don't forget to make a reference marks for the lower and upper parts of the manifold before taking it apart thank you so much guys for your time watching this video see you soon bye bye now